So um, if you haven't heard of uh, Ortelius before, we are uh, a unified catalog of what I like to call supply chain evidence. Uh, we're incubating project at the CD Foundation, and you know our mission really is to make supply chain and microservices a lot easier. Uh, we're just going to go through the, uh, this agenda. We have some time to, to kind of really dig in uh, to some of the work that we're doing. Um, I'm Tracy Reagan. I am the, uh, I would call myself the community organizer. Uh, I'm going to cover working groups, uh, recognition program, and our, what we call our summit. Steve Taylor is going to review some of the architecture that we're working on, and then we're going to um, introduce uh, Andy Block and the Emporus Project, which uh, we did an announcement yesterday about the Emporus Project becoming part of, uh, it becoming a sub-project to Ortil Ortilius. Um, so Ortilius is all about gathering data around supply chain evidence. Um, you know, ultimately our dream is to have so much data that we can actually start doing some intelligence uh, uh, processing. Oh, you can't do AI without data, so we can never build an AI system around DevOps without data. So we want to pull the data in so that this kind of information can start being um, leveraged uh, and used to build smarter systems. And what happens is, is that we're, we're pulling the data in from every workflow, and in a microservices environment, every container has a workflow. So because we're decoupling what we have done in the past from a micro, uh, monolith to microservice, uh, architecture, this kind of data becomes even more distributed and locked in these containers. Um, Ortelius addresses this log visibility. It really addresses the, the question that 65 to 80 percent of the companies are asking, and that is, show me the logs, show me the SBOMs, show me the CVEs, I need to have this data exposed. Um, we would love to have more people as contributors. We'd love to have more uh, enterprise companies uh, telling us what they are facing when it comes to finding this data and putting it to work. So become a contributor. If you've ever thought about joining an open source community, I can tell you Artilius is a fun one to join. We have a really, really great time. Uh, and it, it really will help you improve your coding skills. We're doing microservices. We're doing blockchain. It helps you build your brand. Sime Safter, um, who is a, a, a CDF contributor. Uh, Sasha Wharton was, hadn't done anything in open source, and there he is up there. Uh, you know, he has been, uh, he'll tell you how much he's learned through this process. We do have a recognition program. Um, Garima Bajpai, who um, is at the conference, she built this for us. Uh, we have three groups. We have ambassadors, we have champions, and we have the all-important legend. Ambassadors are individuals who do outreach for us. Um, champions are contributors, and legends are awarded for work in both. And we have our um, leaderboard. Um, Brad McCoy, Udkar Sharma, and Sergio Canales, they are all on the leaderboard for, um, for, for champions and, um, legends. and legends. We have our, every six months we do this crazy thing. It's really cheesy and it's fun. It's called our Visionary Summit. Um, and we do have some amazing presentations, so I don't want to say it's too cheesy. But we do it on Twitch. We play games. Um, we show videos of Valians. <laughs> So we make it as fun as possible, and we do lightning talks. Uh, we, we first start with our beer and donuts, and the beer and donuts means we have people from all over the world. So some people are at, at, it's at night, and some people are in the morning. Uh, we do our awards, and then we have keynotes that speak uh, live. And then after that, we jump over to Twitch, and we show all of our recordings, and we play games, and we have a great time. So if you've never presented before, this is a really good place to learn to present. If you have some really important stuff that you want to get out, some, something on your mind, it's a good place to present. If you've learned something that you want to share, this is a good place to present. And, and one of the things that this, even though it's, um, like Tracy says, cheesy, um, uh, it helps when you are able to show recordings of yourself giving these 10-minute lightning talks. Um, we post them out to YouTube and stuff like that. 
Um, we were able to actually take one of our members who did uh, a lightning talk, and then the following year, they were able to pr present at KubeCon. And that actually helped them get their KubeCon spot by having that out there uh, underneath an open source project. So um, it's one of those things, just come and hang out. Uh, it's super simple. I mean, I, I'll say it right now. I mean, I'm newer to the or to this community. Uh, in my short time working with Tracy, Steve, and the entire community, it's certainly a unique community in a good way, in a very good way. And especially if you're getting into open source and you're just getting off the ground, it's a good opportunity to use this as a venue to kind of build your brand. Yeah, we are one of the only open source communities at the CDF that's not being ran by a, what I call a giant. It's not a Google project. Um, it's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a Netflix project. It is truly a community project. And we have people from South Africa, from Chile, from Guyana, from Pakistan, from India, um, from Turkey. We, so we really are a diverse community from Australia and, and New Zealand. There is challenges in doing that because of the time zones, but we do our best as, that we can to uh, accommodate everyone. So uh, it's an interesting community to be on because of the fact that we really are a true open source organization that we, were, we built from, the gra from a really a grassroots perspective. And, and we've, we've taken people that have never done a git commit and been able to work with them and, and help build out our developer guides and stuff like that to actually help them do their first commit. And even if it's just for a documentation change, you'd be surprised on how terrified people are to commit something and do their first PR. It is, it is one of the scariest things in the world to some of these folks um, to be able to do that. And we'll help walk you through um, doing that. And we're, the kind of philosophy is you, you can't break it, so don't worry about it. We can always undo something. <laughs> and we do believe in fa fail fast. Yeah, fail fast. <laughs> hey, Steve, I'm going to hand this over to you. And I'm, All oh. right, I got my. Okay. I'm going to put this over here, Beth, for Sasha. I may get a feedback. Let me turn this one off. So one of the things that we have here for the, um, the architecture is our current architecture, if I can try to zoom in on this. So one of the things with, um, with Ortelius is the original architecture, um, it ended up being a monolith that we started with, so basically a Java application running in Tomcat. And as we uh, got new requirements from our uh, community, those new features were actually put into microservices. And as part of that, um, we did it for two purposes. One, uh, to move away from the monolith into the microservice world for main maintenance. So, uh, th and the second part was um, the smaller pieces, the smaller microservices gave the developers um, a confined area to work on <laughs> without being overly complicated at, at that level. So um, that's where we originally started out with. And this is kind of like the architecture diagram of what we have going on in, in the monolith. So it's a monolith with, I think, like um, eight microservices at this point. Um, we did get a, a, a grant from uh, Ripple. And let me see if I can find the next page. So we did get to get a grant from Ripple. And it's uh, the XRPL project. So we are actually, our new release is going to be uh, based on blockchain and you actually using the blockchain part, uh, the ledger part of the blockchain. And the reason why that's important is because we want to keep track of everything in an immutable fashion. So every time you create a, do a new build and you create a new Docker image, for example, all that metadata around that has to be immutable. And we're going to push that into the blockchain and so you have a historical perspective of what's happened in your organization. As part of that, we're actually going to use uh, NFT storage, um, which is IPFS under the covers and Filecoin, to do long-term persistence of all this metadata. 
Um, one of the challenging things that we ran across is the amount of redundant data that's out there. Um, if you think about an SBOM, if you look at an SBOM, every single um, package in the SBOM references a, um, a license file. Well, it also includes the whole license file in SBOM. So instead of duplicating that into storage, we've gone through a normalization process that we're only going to store things once um, at pro uh, part of that process. And with Emporis, um, we're going to be taking those schemas that we have and pushing them into the um, Emporis uh, registry uh, at that level as well. So um, because we got this grant, we actually have bounties out there. We're, uh, Tracy said we have you know, our recognition program, but also because we have some money floating around. It wasn't a lot. It was $75,000, but we actually are able to um, we were one of the first organizations within the Linux Foundation to get into what's called the GitHub Sponsorship Program. So GitHub actually is, um, allows you to now pay people through their interface. And you'll see, it's a confusing, um, it just went uh, GA less than a month ago, um, but we're in, we were in part of the, um, the beta program of it. The terminology is very confusing. Um, and just reach out to me because it's, it's a little, they, they have a, the sponsorship program, but they uh, um, look at it from both sides, whether you're a project sponsoring somebody or if you're a developer sponsoring a project. So the terminology gets mixed in their world um, and it's a little bit tricky to get set up, but we are able to pay people um, throughout the world. So we're actually paying folks in uh, South Africa, Ghana, um, uh, Pakistan, and stuff like that, and in the States. Um, behind the scenes, it uses Stripe for the payment um, as part of the process. So if you go out to our repo, um, the way we've organized everything in Ortilius is the Ortilius, Ortilius repo, the main repo, is where we have all of our issues. Um, so if you're looking for something, look in that repository. And you can see here, we've actually tagged things for a bounty. Um, basically, we've broken it down and the bounties into 15 minute increments. And we'll say, okay, this is gonna take two hours, so it's a bounty of eight. Um, and that's gonna be equivalent, basically, I can't remember, I think it's $55 an hour or $65 an hour that you get paid. Not bad. Um, but we, we go through and, and do that, and um, as part of the process, after the PR gets merged, reviewed, the team signs off whether you get paid or not. So it's not up to me, it's up to the team to decide whether you can get paid uh, as part of that process. So check that out. Um, and it, we, we're constantly adding stuff uh, to that, so it will change as the, we go through and, and keep on doing the development. And as part of that, we're going to be bringing in, like I said, the Emporis uh, sub-project. Um, and Andrew, Andy's going to talk to you about exactly what that is and, and some of the vision that we have between Ortelius and Emporis. All yours, Andy. All mine. Oh, no, I've been scary. <laughs> all right, all yours. All right. All right, everyone. So we know that Ortilius is really meant to be able to collect all of our supply chain assets. But one of the hardest part, you know, you talk about data. First of all is you, we have this large amount of data, but where is that data coming from? How do we discover it? Where is it? How do we relate to it? Is it manual? Do we need to actually perform some manual actions to collect this data? Or can we provide or make use of a facility to help us better organize and understand what's in our entire supply chain ecosystem? And that's really what this Emporis project is meant to do, is to help satisfy not only this use case, but to be able to provide a way to be able to organize different disparate types of data. And this project makes use of a concept called OCI artifacts. How many of you have ever heard of OCI artifacts? Raise your hand. All right, we're gonna have a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one really fast. No problem. Um, how many of you use container images? 
Did you know that you can put other things in a container registry like Docker Hub and Quay and GitHub Container Registry aside from container images? And like what can you put in there? Helm charts, WASM modules, even binary files, anything. So what we're doing is we're tapping into that ecosystem in being able to be able to store and add metadata to these artifacts and then be able to aggregate the data together. And then this project started out of a, out of a, a bunch of us at Red Hat. So Red Hat are here. And we wanted to not only provide a capability for the community because you know, Red Hat, you know, being good stewards in the community, we want to be able to make it easier to find data. Data is the hardest thing out there. Aside from just collecting it, how do we actually make use of it? I do a lot of work in the supply chain space, and right now S-bombs are all the thing. But how you actually use an S-bomb, nobody really knows yet. We know how to make it. How do you actually use it? It's that using that's the hardest part. What Emporus provides us an opportunity to do is to add additional metadata to various parts of our supply chain assets, everything from S-bombs, um, you know, container images, anything that you have as part of your uh, secure software supply chain, you can add associations to it through metadata that's stored on these artifacts. And Emporus provides a number of capabilities to help you understand where they come from and what's part of them. So some of the capabilities that are provided by Emporus is the ability to make use of enhanced metadata. I want to go ahead and tag some specific information on my artifact. So if I have a container image, I might want to add a couple additional values. In the OCI community, these are enabled through annotations. So like Helm charts have annotations, Kubernetes manifests have annotations. You can put annotations on these OCI artifacts and then Emporus will make use of the existing Docker API I know with Docker, you know, not everyone uses Docker, right? Docker, you could use Cryo, you could use anything you want, but in the end, they're still using the Docker API. It was Docker created many years ago, the V2 API. And, I've, and, and the work that not only myself, but others in the community have done around OCI have been really focusing on how we make life easier when working with OCI artifacts. OCI artifacts is still very, very young, so it's coming along. There's a new specification in OCI that's actually going to make it a little easier to work with, with artifacts. It's currently in release candidate. Hopefully, it'll get to a, a GA soon. Community's getting, you know, community with a lot of good an ambitions. There's some controversy, so we're just going over and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. In addition, instead of having to go ahead and talk to the, all your different disparate sources for uh, your supply chain assets, Emporus makes use of a single API that you can call and it's able to understand all these different disparate components. And that makes it easier for you to manage your entire software supply chain. The relationships is very important. So it understands through these annotations all the different relationships that you have within your different supply chain assets. Does an S-bomb relate to a container image? Does one relate to the other? What Emporus provides is that single API for you to then manage your entire uh, fleet of software assets. And it really is, the most important thing is just providing visibility. I work with organizations across the globe and I work with individuals not only from deep in the tech but also at the sea level. And as much as I love tech, they, the sea levels don't necessarily love to see all the ones and zeros. They want to see pretty pictures. And what this will provide is the ability to provide new understanding about what's in your entire software supply chain. So this is just a brief introduction of what Emporus can at least provide from its inherent capabilities. And by joining the Ortilis project, we're able to then join forces to provide new sets of capabilities to be able to then make your software supply chain provenance even, more, even stronger. Any questions I want to, I know obviously we kind of flew through that, but we're, at least those on the Emporus project are thrilled to be able to join this community. In just our short amount of time, we've been welcomed with open arms. Honestly, it's kind of scary, but in a good way. Um, I love when the community is just open to be able to see new contributions, new ways of working, and just being able to see how we can work together to really emphasize the security and capabilities that we're able to provide with this. So thanks again, Tracy.
Steve and the entire community. You guys joined our, our community calls and it's like, oh my goodness gracious, you're excited. That's a good, excited. that's a good thing. So really appreciate it and thank you very much and looking forward to a lot of fun together. Hey, and you got a quick question about yes. the forest. Yeah, sure. Um, is it uh, a federated type of um, viewpoint or is it more, you know, uh, like Docker Hub, a single uh, type of uh, access point? So you will go through a single, AP, a single point to start out with, but it can go ahead and talk to other um, components because you add the additional metadata of where that source happened to be located. Got it. So I can say, okay, my my collection is going to be stored within Docker Hub, for, for example. It can talk to Quay. It can go ahead and talk to other APIs. Obviously, assuming you can communicate with it. But aside from that, yes. Got it. How, how does this compare or relate to things like CRDs? If I have a set of custom resource definitions or some other object, you know, that, that, that might model a car, for example. Uh, how does, how, if, I, if I had that set of things, how do I get that into the force? Or am I thinking of it? So, so we, have a, we have a binary that allows you to then use that to create this, what we have right now called the collection, which allows you to create these relationships to these different components. So we have, so we have a CLI-based um, uh, uh, tool that helps build that graph out. So if, if I've got my, my thing, Yep. Whatever it may be, the, the CLI tool will kind of convert it into... Exactly. And that's how we currently have it. And it, we're obviously very, very new. In, this is a very new project. And being able to look at new use cases, especially around you know, some of the work that you have all done here as part of Artilius, being able to see how we can take the work that we've done thus far and really start to broaden its sets of capabilities. Right now, simple C, um, you know, a, a command line tool that helps build that out. Um, I always struggle because when everything is compared to Kubernetes, I love Kubernetes. Kubernetes is kind of the bread and butter of distributed you know, computing today. But many organizations I work with don't have Kubernetes. But what do they typically have, though? Most people, most, most organizations have a container registry of some sort, whether it be a dedicated one, either a harbor, a quay, you name it, or they're going to use a tool like JFogger Artifactory, Nexus, that has that capability built in. They can usually enable that, and they can then make use of these OCI artifacts, because most, most container registries today support OCI artifacts. I can't think of any ones that don't support it in some form or another. Some do only allow certain types of OCI artifacts. For example, a Quay put at IO only accepts, I think, five or six different types. I think they're fixing was it's, well, it still is. So the Quid I.O. is still limited. If you have the on-premise version, you can customize it. Uh, Docker Hub's the same way. It only has a certain set as well. But the idea is that making use of these OCI artifacts, I see it actually expanding to be more mainstream. So am I, sorry to go on. No, please. Am I thinking of this the wrong way? Let's say I have set of hosts, and those hosts have processes on them, you know, in a non-container world. Yeah. Something that models a VM, something that models a process running on that VM, something that models an application running on that VM, something that models a user, and so on and so forth. Would that be the right data to store in from or not? No. No, right now we're just focused on, like, files. So I have certain files, so it could be like an SBOM, for example. It could be a container image, and then being able to associate metadata to that. That could be something down the road that we could look into, but right now that's not what, what the current capabilities are. Gotcha. Yes? So, to support uh, the kind of open standard like OpenSSL support and better draw parallels like the tech chains, uh, as they are using the cost of framework or something like that? Or so, we, so we're n nothing's inherent to it, but you can apply the same type of modeling to it. So like, looking at like salsa, not only salsa, but like intoto attestations, that's another thing you can apply to some of this metadata. Yeah, so think of it as a place that um, will be able to take 
the supply chain information that we gather and put it somewhere so we can then query it uh, down the road. Yeah. We just want to be able to provide a way that you can then you know, expand it later on. You build, you build this collection, and then from that, you're able to then associate all your different components that are part of your software supply chain. So like in the Arturus world, one of the, the important parts is like the uh, provenance, um, the signatures, um, all that information that you want to be able to use. So when you do download an artifact, you can look at uh, and do the verification at that point. So you have to know where, where things came from, um, you know, how they're assigned, um, those type of things, so you can actually do something with it. Yeah. Once again, this, we're just getting started. We're excited about it because we did like the first step by joining the Ortelis community. We're able to then reach the next level for us to be able to kind of expand. We have a lot of ideas, but the idea, but we haven't gotten the chance to actually execute upon them. And by joining forces. We're able to see some of the work that you have done in the community thus far and see how we can then supercharge each other's initiatives. You probably should reach out to Sasha because I know he has some questions for you there. Let him know that he should he can talk. Sasha, reach out to me. I'm happy to answer anything. <laughs> um, if you want to obviously go through more of the, the community channel, it's even better so we can not, so we can have the entire community part of it. But at least reach out to me if you ever want to have a chat. So. Um, what, so in uh, Ortelius, our main programming languages um, with the new blockchain stuff I was talking about, that's, we're going to be implementing that in Go. Um, we did try Python, but a lot of the libraries that we needed um, around IPFS just didn't exist and we didn't feel like rewriting them. Um, so we actually did a pivot uh, over to Golang um, like I said, the front end is going to be in, I can't remember if it's going to be Svelte or Riot.js, uh, one of those two frameworks that we're going to be using for the front end part. So mainly JavaScript. Um, we do have a bunch of DevOps pieces. Um, so we have all of our GitHub actions, our, our Docker stuff. Um, I, I, like I said earlier, one of my other sessions, we run everything on uh, Azure uh, Kubernetes. Um, we have documentation, uh, testing that needs to happen, um, and uh, you're, you guys are in, you have a Go S. Uh, we're, we're Golang based. You're Golang as well. Um, so if you don't have any experience in Golang, reach out to us, we'll help teach you. Um, Sasha, who's on, uh, on the Zoom from South Africa, he's been doing a bunch of our DevOps stuff around Terraform, our Helm charts, uh, things like that. Um, We've built out, uh, Sasha built out Ortelius in a box. So how do you get up and going on, on uh, running on Kind or Killer Coda uh, on, on those fronts? So we're looking at taking the, now it's official. <laughs> we're gonna be working on standing up uh, Emporus as well uh, on, under one of those platforms so people can kick the tires and help us contribute. It will not be long before you can get your hands on it. I promise. We promise. <laughs> so, so, is the blockchain going to just be pointers to Emporus, basically? Yeah, so uh, in Ortelius, um, everything is a pointer, basically. There are very few artifacts that we actually do store. So, when we talk about a version of a component, uh, a version of a component could reference a Docker image, um, it could reference a jar file or war file. Uh, that's often artifactory, for example. Uh, because of that model, we can just point to other things, and um, one of the things we'd be pointing to is the uh, OCI registry on where to find things. And that's the beauty of it is, you know, we're not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel, but we want to put all the links together um, to let you navigate you know, um, how something, um, this artifact, what do you know about it? Well, I know it's sitting over in, uh, in Porus, and I know the signature is in, in Toto, in Toto um, and it was signed over, or the providence is coming from this Git repo in this build system. 
So all that information is being linked together so you can actually navigate and do something with it. Now that's where the fun part comes from. Once we get this, 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 this basic um, data collection at, you know, out there at scale, now we can start doing OPA and AI against all that data to make decisions and make the DevOps process um, intelligent. So right now the, the DevOps pipeline is not very smart. You say go, it says, yeah, okay, I'll go. <laughs> you know, we gotta put the, the checks and balances in place to make sure, make it a, a intelligent and allow it to actually, you know, get to the point where it can actually self-heal, you know, when a pipeline breaks. You know, how do I go, the, 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 I went through Argo, I got to the point of uh, it failed on the blue-green, now what? Right. You know, what do we do from there? Who do I talk to? Do we let it sit there in, in, in the blue status for a couple hours or do we need to back this thing out really quick? That type of thing, those type of scenarios will come about with the data that we're, we're collecting and being, being, being able to act upon them um, automatically. Any questions? I know we're kind of just rambling here. That's and me. Rambling's a good thing though. <laughs> it's, it gets food for, food for thought, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna see how many developers join. You know you want to. We have candy. So like Tracy said, um, we have our visionary summit coming up the 16th or 7th? Week from Friday. Week from Friday. So you can actually find us on Twitch or just go out to the, um, uh, like I was seeing in one of the previous meetings, um, all of our stuff, all of our uh, meetings and stuff are out on the CDF events calendar. So if you go out to the CDF website and you go to the, the shared calendar, you'll see all of our, our meeting um, uh, time slots out there. Uh, so for Atilius, uh, today, what is today, Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> today we had our, our outreach meeting, no, that was yesterday. So yesterday we had our outreach meeting. We're supposed to have an architecture meeting this Thursday, but I'm flying, so we're gonna probably, um, we may postpone that. Um, otherwise, uh, Ukarsh from India will run that one. And then the following Monday, we're gonna have our general meeting for Artilius. And then you, your guys are on Wednesdays. Yeah, we're Wednesday at Dude. 2 p.m. Um, Eastern. Yeah. <laughs> So we're gonna be um, working with uh, the Emporis group as well, um, getting everything uh, restructured. We're, we try to be time zone friendly. Um, for a point, we did have Australia on Thursday afternoons here in the States. Um, and we're working, we're, we're gonna come back after this um, whole thing here at uh, OpenSSF, I mean Open Source Summit and talk to Brad, who's down in Australia, to see if we can get that meeting back up and going again. So we try to be time zone friendly. Um, we are in Discord versus Slack. So take that. We, we find it a lot easier to communicate on Discord. Any, anything else I forgot? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Like I said, I expect about a dozen people to be added to the repo here with their permissions. So uh, please come join us. Yep. And if you have any questions, we'll be around to chat about the project and anything else. Thank you.